my dear students welcome back to my class in the series of learning data structures through c in the previous video we discussed about the different types of queues well in today's video we will discuss about the applications of queues like where actually this queue data structure is implemented so those who are new to my channel please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so that you can get the notification of all the new videos Watch the video till the end. Do not skip the video. And if you like the video, please click on the like button and share the video to all your friends. Applications of queues. So applications means the field where we can use this queues. So we all, we all know how this queue data structure is going to work. That is how it is represented in the memory and how uh, we can use this queue, the ordering principle of queue, which is first in, first out, first come, first serve, just like that. So where this actual concept is implemented? So let us see that now. It says it is used in serving the request on single shared resource system. So just imagine you are uh, working in a browsing center you are just uh, printing something, you don't have a printer attached to your system. The printer is attached somewhere else to some other machine there. You give a print command from your machine, you will be getting the print from the printer. Means the printer is shared, right? So here what happens, the resources will be shared in a network, right? In such a case, how the processor is going to handle that? request see there may be plenty of machines in a network and who is going to give the first print command who is the next one all these things have to be taken care so the operating system the processor has to take care of all these things so how it is going to take care of all these tasks given by multiple users so here comes the queue data structure which says First come, first serve. Means the first user who gives the print command will be the one who gets the print first. So all these tasks will be put into the queue. It will be put into the queue. Say task 1, task 2, task 3. Say print command 1. The user who has given the first command will be the first to get the printout. This can happen only if we follow the queue data structure because it is having the ordering principle first in, first out. So the first instruction given by the user will be the first user will be the first to be executed. So user 1 will give the print command means user 1 itself will get the print first. Then the user 2 because it will be put under the queue. And all the print commands will be put into the printer pool where inside the printer pool also the data will be executed one after the other. Say you want to print the document. So you will give the first file print, then the second file, then the third file. So the ordering principle here will be the first file to come out first with the hard copy, then the second file, then the third file. So all these happens with the queue data structure because it follows the FIFO structure, first in, first out. So that is what like printer, which follows this queue data structure and task scheduling, CPU task scheduling means how the central processor, see the CPU is the one which process all your task. See immediately when you switch on the system, you will be giving many instructions one by one, one by one. So as soon as the des desktop screen comes, you will be giving enormous commands you may click on refresh button five to ten times you may just open one of the applications you may click on that application five to ten times so all these tasks will be put into the queue and the queue will execute that in first in first start means all the tasks will be put into the queue and from the queue the task will be given to processor and the processor will execute those tasks one by one according to the order in which it has been entered into the queue. If it is the first task which is entered into the queue means that will be the first one to execute. This is what with the 
CPU scheduling which follows queue data structure. When the CPU executes a task, that what we have inside the queue with first come, first serve. Say I have clicked on refresh button five times means all the refresh command, first refresh, second, third, fourth, fifth will be entered into the queue. One by one it executes. Then the next command. So I will be opening Google Chrome. Then that will be the next task like that. Then call center phone systems. As you all know, you just put a call to the call centers. And the service providers who will be attending your calls will be, that is, the service providers receives your calls and put it in the queue. The first person who calls to the call center will be the first to be answered. So your task will be put into the queue and the call center people will reply to your request according to that order itself. First come, first serve basis. Then it is handling of interrupts. Interrupts means errors. So in the real time system also we come across many errors and how these errors are handled. So all those errors say error 1, error 2, error 3. First error will be the first to be handled. So here the errors will be handled in the order in which occurs. So I have the error, first error that what I have got some error is immediately what happens I am going to open the application something happens with that application the application hangs up. So some error occurs. So that error will be put into the queue. So that first error will be put into the queue. Then second error I may just open uh, some software and the software is not opening that will be a second error. So here comes the first error which was with the application will be handled first by the processor. So the processor uses this queue data structure to handle the errors also, interrupts also. Then it is round robin technique. So all these are some special technique that what we use especially with data structures maybe to sort the data or maybe to search some data. So this is a special technique which follows the queue data structure to implement the solution of many problems. Then simulators. You all know how the simulators will be. See, you will go to the uh, car driving class, you work on the simulators. All your actions will be put into the queue. So you may apply a gear, you may take a left turn or right turn. All the actions that what we give will be entered into the queue and the queue will handle that one by one. First come, first serve. Then printer server routines as I said you will have a printing pool and all the commands will be entered into the printing pool and the pool task that what we the task that what we have inside the pool will be handled one by one according to FIFO principle first in first out. So then we have multi programming platform system so when you have multi programming means multiple programs running simultaneously but what happens we get a feel that all these programs are running simultaneously but all these tasks are put into the queue one by one according to its term those programs will be executed say you will open a uh, notepad you will open uh, some uh, music file and side by side you will be working with some browser and all these programs will be running simultaneously. You get a feel that it will be working simultaneously but they will be put into the pool of queue and it will be executed one by one according to its turn itself and it will be given to processor. So that is what multiple programming platform. You get a feel that everything will be running at a time simultaneously. No, but it will be all the programs will be put into the queue and one by one so say I say program 1, program 2, program 3. See program 1 you are working with notepad. You are working or you are operating some sound files. You are working with some browser. So all these are put into the queue and it will be executed one by one. So this is what with the applications of queue that where actually we use this queue data structure in real time. So hope you have understood with these applications. The next video we will be discussing about the algorithm of how this Q data structure performs in Q and DQ. So that's all for today's video. See you in the next video. Till then take care. Bye bye.